Hashtag the GES crew. So real quick, last last question I have, and I'm just going to say, I'm not even going to ask a question. I'm going to say one thing, and we gonna, we can chime in. Antonio Brown. Mm. Oh, oh. And I, I want you to start it off, Blaine. Okay, I'm going to start it off. Okay. Because this is my last show, I know. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's a mental condition, you know? I mean... You know, in football, you have a lot of head collisions and stuff like that. And they have a big thing about being uh, um, depression, mental depression and stuff like that. And I just think, you know, because, I mean, I think he could have went out a different way. All he had to do was just finish the games. You know, I think he's going through something mentally. You know what I mean? I mean, he, no matter how you look at it, he's going to the Hall of Fame. That's number one. Number two is that, you know, uh, He's going to always be about he's, he was trying to be about that. He said it was about that paper and stuff like that, but he's paid. You know what I mean? But I think if it was really about the paper, I think what he should have done was just play out the season. I mean, because he was, you know, the quarterback, um, Brady took him to his home, try to get him over to New England. He did all that. And then the things. He did with uh, the Raiders, you know, and he showed Gruden. I mean, Gruden is a part of that, you know, kind of crazy type. You know, they got rid of him. So that could have been a part of that, too. You never know when you're playing these professional sports. You know what I mean? Only people see is the people on the inside, you know. But to me, I think it's a mental problem. You know what I mean? I mean, I think he's for him just to walk off like that, you know, just just leave the sport. And a lot of people because I was looking, I was just hoping I was rooting for this guy. You know what I mean? You know, they was taking him in and out of the league and stuff like that. I was really rooting for this guy. And and it sends messages to kids to stop, to quit. You know, I don't want that message sent. You know, I don't want people to just quit. You know, our kids just quit something. You know, I want them to, because he's being looked at. And I think that he should have just finished the season. You know, whether they won the Super Bowl or not. And then went out on top, you know what I mean? Because that's what the sport is about. The sport is about trying to go out on top, you know, like a Kobe Bryant. or Even if you don't make it, even if you get, they still look at you with love and stuff like that. And this is what it's about. You got people watching you. And that's my that's my opinion. Absolutely. And before before anybody else gets in it, I want to interject a little bit because I got a, a, a slightly different perspective. And I agree with you about the kid. Uh, part I, I didn't think about that you're right that was a, a bad message sent to yeah. our youth but yeah. uh i actually took time out this week and I, I i listened to the podcast that he was on i wanted to see you know what he had to say and i also listened to the interview that B bruce arian did because i wanted to see his perspective from it and and mm -hmm. the interesting thing that i got from Antonio Brown, I feel like it was about money he made a he made a comment about how mm -hmm. if Tom Brady was his friend why mm -hmm. didn't he lobby for him to get more money like he did Gronk? And that was a valid that that was a valid statement. He said that he was making uh, league minimum for veterans, but Gronk came in making top dollar, and he felt a little slighted by that. And also, mm -hmm. a week prior to the incident of him walking off the field, his agent reached out to the team and asked for his uh his uh bonuses for uh, reaching um, certain achievements on the field be guaranteed. And they denied that. Um, mm -hmm. So it seemed like you said that it was about money. And his gripe mm -hmm. was, you know, I deserve to be paid just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. And he his right. point was, if you look at the receiving core, who's the best receiver on the team? Him. And that, that was his point. Him. And, and him. yeah, he said he was the best receiver on the team. And he said, mm -hmm. but I'm not being treated as such. Now, mm -hmm. now, if you look at Bruce Arians, Arian mm -hmm. side of you, uh, I and this is my personal opinion. I don't know this for sure, but I feel like Bruce never wanted him. I think it was something to appease Tom yeah, Brady. Um, and you know, he basically said the same thing Antonio Brown said. You know, they had conversations about him going back in the game. Antonio Brown was like, "No," and Bruce Arians was like, "Get the f out of here." Now. Mm -hmm. Mm, With that being that. said, I know certain lingo is used in sports, but it mm -hmm. is no way that I would work for a company. And because I didn't do something that my employer asked me to do, 
I wouldn't feel like you should talk to me like that. Now, asking me to leave, that's appropriate because this is your company or this is the company that you manage. But uh, at that point, is it right to talk to that man like that? He's still a grown man. Whether, yeah, you know, his that. behavior is warranted or not, he's still a grown man. And All because right. you don't agree with him in that moment, should you be talked to like that? Go ahead, Sean. All right. Well, I'm I'm going I'm to put it in a, a little bit more context because from what I've was what I was looking at in it. He was the initial reason was okay, well, he was injured. He had an ankle injury and I think it was like maybe game six or something um of, of the season. And he was he was saying that, you know, okay, well, hey, you know, coach my my, my ankle and I, you know, I I need to go and um, you know, get surgery for that, you know. And he had his own like his own preferred doctor look at his ankle and um you know give a um assessment of it but then um you know the coach bruce Aaron said hey look no nah, we go we go with this uh you know this secondary uh you know uh doctor and uh get a second opinion on it and he was like he didn't want to do that you know because he already got the you know got what he needed to um, get from that so hey look i need to go surge so he was like well i'm you know, I'm not sure about if I want to go out and play like this coach because I'm injured, you know, and it was they had a big brouhaha about that. He said, you going he basically said, you gonna go out there and play. If you're not going to go out there and play, then, hey, go, you know, and that's when all that's where all that that came from. That's from what he from what Antonio was saying, you know, and, and Bruce addressed that. And, but I, it's hard to kind of get a feel for, you know, who was right, who was wrong, because he actually played in the game. And Bruce's mm -hmm. point was, if he was injured when he came to the sideline, why didn't he talk to our team doctors at that point? Now, I don't know if he was injured or he wasn't. I, what I do know is he didn't practice for a couple of days that week because mm -hmm. there was rumored that he was injured. So that may, that may be valid, validated that he was but injured. Gotta, but you got to understand, man, I mean, he wasn't allowed to come back in the league at all. I mean, he wasn't even allowed to come back in the league. They, they, they almost like banned him to come back in the league. It took Brady to get that man back in the league. So it's just to show that this guy can still play. So, of course, he's not going to get grunt money because he didn't go out like grunt. If right, he went right. out like grunt, he probably would have came back with grunt money or a little bit more than he's making now. I mean, this guy was like banned not to play for no team. And when the owners get together, they stick together. That's a tough game. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So for him to come back, Brady at least got him back on the field where if they won another Super Bowl, he might get an opportunity to make it that next year. All you need is a chance. Yeah, you can't he, go out without a chance, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you walk up the field in front of our kids and stuff like that, you know, if I had a chance to do it one more time so I can show that I'm good, I want that chance. I know it's gonna it's not gonna be what I want, but at least give me that chance where I can prove myself. So if I can play again next year, after three Super Bowls, I know I might get that money from some team or someone or even them, you know? Because yeah. he, like you said, the coach didn't want him there. The coach never wanted him there. Right. The yeah, owners, he... And if the coach don't want you, the owners don't want you. So trust me, if he had that one chance, don't take the chance out like walking off the field. You know, you know the situation. You knew the situation before you got there. What was going on? You, 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 they tried it in New England. You left New England. He got you here. He built the whole team itself. At least give us a chance and give the kids a chance to watch you make it. That's my only opinion, man. You know, yeah, see, I, 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 no, I, I get that side, and I had a talk with my son um, about this the other day. We actually talked about it multiple times, but he always brings more information every time we talk. And one thing that he said was, you know, he said his thing was the, the trappings of, you know, be professional or this and that. And he said, you know, it's the, and this is how broad, we, I mean, me and my son, we talked, we had these conversations. And he was like, it's a difference between the way Malcolm X would respond or the way Malcolm, you know, Martin Luther King would. He was like, you know, Martin Luther King was nonviolent, and they were happy with that because they didn't they didn't feel threatened. The, the 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 powers that be didn't feel threatened by the impact of how Martin Luther King because it was nonviolent protest. 
this is what he's saying in parallel. But Malcolm X was like, either you, you know, we you're gonna respond or we're gonna do this. And sometimes our culture, sometimes our people, when we feel slighted, it's it's an emotional because this guy, I mean, it's proven that he was injured. He, he shouldn't have been out on the field. I didn't get to- oh. Antonio Brown. Oh. He shouldn't have been out on the field. And and that's what people aren't taking into account for, for the coach to if he went out there and gave himself um I don't know how long he played half the game. It don't mean at the rest of the game he still feel like he did at the beginning of the game. Football is a brutal banging up all the time sport. And for him to say that to him when he telling him, coach, I don't feel right. This uh, ankle is like, an uh, ankle is a vital part. It's not like your wrist, even though your wrist is vital. I'm not saying your wrist is not vital. But think about when you're playing football, a full, <clears throat> the fullest contact sport that we know of. If you break that ankle in a way that it can't be repaired, your career is over and your life is altered. So for him as the coach not to have enough compassion, you trying to tell me there wasn't another receiver that could have went out there if this man was hurting. He knew that he was hurt. He got pissed because, number one, it was money. That's one. Number two, when he told him, coach, I don't, I don't, I'm not ready. My ankle don't feel right. He played a full half a game for him. And for him to say F you and get out of here or you'll cut or whatever the lingo was, I think the impact of what he did was what maybe he should have done because now everybody want to find out what happened. And that, now, the they, spotlight, they, now the spotlight is on him and Bruce Arians, but he's showing the impact. This guy was injured. Look at the X-ray. They got the X-ray out there. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, they're yeah, saying his the protrude, his his, his it, you know the uh, shards was protruding out his out right. his freaking ankle and stuff like that. So it's organization like, yeah. should have had him on the IR. He should have never been in that game. You know. Wait a minute. So you saying that he was injured? Yes. That I mean, that's what it was. That's that was the central focal point of why he was you know, feeling like he was feeling that and saying, hey, you know, I can't play out here because I'm, I'm fucking injured, coach. And for uh-huh. and for me, initially, my response, I'm going to say my response is wrong. So I'm like, man, how can he do that? You know, you know, I didn't know all the information. That's why we have to be careful when we respond and don't have and don't have all the information because, you know, they was using him like you use a cow or a goat. Well, in that case, yeah. I take mine back then because I didn't know he was injured. Well, no, your yeah. perspective is valid, but it's just right. goes to show when we don't know. And I, I'm not saying I have, I'm not saying I have a hundred percent of the information, but I do know that he was injured and he gave up his body for half a game. And for the coach to not to know that he was injured, knowing he should have been on the IR, we're not talking about he got a scrape on his arm. We ain't talking about you know even that. You know, he he got he scraped up his knee, or or he or he rolled his ankle. Now everybody done rolled their ankle up here, and probably people watching this have rolled their ankle. You know how painful that is. We yeah. talking about this thing is fractured. Yeah, yeah. playing with yeah, world class athletes that know this is the biggest part. Playing with world class athletes that know he's injured and where he's injured. But, but listen, exactly. don't think they won't calculate exactly to take him out based on that. Exactly. And for your you, coach you to mm-hmm. tell you to get on the field when you out there with these warriors, these gladiators wanting an edge, the edges I know is ankle. All I got to do is, you know, we lined up, smack him on the ankle, smack him on the ankle, smack him on the ankle. Imagine if, imagine this. Now, I'm not saying this happened, but just imagine this. Imagine the first half, every snap, the guy that's checking him, before they get off the line, he smacks him on the ankle. Every snap. Now think about how this guy's feeling on the sideline. Now, I'm not saying they did that, but these are the things that happens. Football is a, you got to take your advantages. In every sport, you got to find an edge. 
So this guy's <laughs> injured, and he gave him his body up for a half a football. A half a football. And his coach said that to him. It goes to show that he don't give a damn. Mm. Well, go ahead, Blaine. No, I'm thinking, you know, usually if, when, a, when a football player is injured, right, you know, they usually – they have the two trainers that they put the, the, the raincoats on them and then they escort them to the back and then they go take x-rays. You know what I'm saying? If there's an injury or something like that. I, I'm thinking, shouldn't they have, like, went with a, with a trainer to the back and got x-rays and stuff like that before – just, just X-rays are already field. done. Yeah, they part, based him, on they didn't put him on the IRs where he should have been. Yeah, based on um what 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 done. based on what Gary's saying, um they already had this information. This wasn't something that came up during the game. Oh, this oh. was information that was already known. Um, and a lot of times, a lot of times, based off of things, documentaries that I've seen and information that's leaked. In, in, mm -hmm. in professional sports, the trainer will ask you, do you feel like mm -hmm. you can go? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the, usually the trainer walks you to the back. You got to take x-rays, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially if you can't, you felt like, if you feel like you can't go back in the game, they usually have you, again, go back to the back to take x-rays, uh, and the trainer will walk you back there so they can get results. And they usually have a, a team doctor that's there that tells you at that point where you can play or whether you can play or not. So, well, it didn't even. Well, first and of all, they, they the had the say. information. Yeah. Guess who got the final say? Who? The coach. Yeah. 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 He got that. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. wow. So it gives a different perspective because people, you know, looking at him like he's crazy. And he probably was crazy at that moment because he felt like. Y'all don't even care about me. You're, number one, y'all ain't paying me. And now you mm -hmm. want me to go out here and end my, end my career and change, potentially change m my life, the way my body mm -hmm. moves. Because, you know, he's already, he's already injured. I mean, he gave him a half, man. To me, that take big guts already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if <laughs> it happened like that, I can see his point. If it happened like that, I can see his point. But I... I it's like I, like you say, I don't know the whole thing. I don't know what's going on on the foot on the football field and stuff like right. that. The only thing I can see is what I'm watching on TV. You know what I mean? For him to take his shoulder pads off, I played football. I know I ain't taking my shoulder pads off for nothing, no matter what. I don't care what that coach say to me. I could talk to him on the inside of that and inside of that locker room. But to take your shoulder pads off, I have never seen that in no sports. And I'm sure there's worse things that happen. You know. I'm I'm thinking that it could have been settled in a different way, you know. But he's a man, and he's gonna do his thing. He's going to the Hall of Fame regardless. So I mean, I don't know. I just think I just didn't. I don't know the whole story, and I I just I don't know. I hope it's you know? not career ending for him. Both oh, it's done. Days. He's yeah, done. Yeah, he, he's, he's done. He, he, he'll never yeah, play. He, he, he's, he's probably done. done. He's probably he's done. done. He's done. He's done, buddy. You can forget that yeah. because well, well, no team won't. Listen, owners don't like that type of attitude regardless who you work for. You can work for Mercedes, Chrysler. You can work for <laughs> IBM. You can work, you can work, if, you, if you take your shirt off, your suit and shirt off. And you basically there, saying, hey, I don't give a damn. You, the, the, you ain't working, like they say, you'll never work in this town again. Well, look, <laughs> the same emotion that it takes to get on that field and perform is the same emotion that they just a lot of times will be displayed when they feel disrespected in that capacity. And I mean, it was a decision to make. Now, yeah. you know, I can't say that I would have made the decision because I'm always, you know, I look, let me tell you something. I've been in decisions at work and uh, at, at different times throughout my adult career and had to think, do I knock this person out? Is that going to benefit? This was the first thing kind of my head. Is that going to benefit my family if I knock mm -hmm. them out? Right. So then I just get up and walk away. But it, it, it's been people been saved by my children not even being in the room. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, everybody <laughs> everybody a, has a, a a motivator for to keep them right. in check. You know what I mean? And I don't think you know, he thought his, on on that level. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Yeah. He he won't think it on that Somebody level. He was thinking because you know he he has an ego. He has a big yeah. ego, 
And I mean, that's been apparent in, 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 in his throughout his career, you know, right. so that you're going to see him do these things that's, you know, maybe a little bit extreme to a level where, hey, look, uh, you know, the known person might might not go that route. You know, they right. may be a little bit more have a little bit more, uh, you know, sensibilities about them and, and, and address it in a in a better way. But I mean. Some yeah, that was that, like a that was like a a, a, a Rana test response. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, and let he me just—he just, he lucky he got he, he was able to get a ring out of that because these are the, I'm telling you those owners do not play that. They, they well, have, they well, have well, let me just say this in closing. Um, I want the young athletes, female or male, watching this this podcast to know one thing: as an African American. In sports, we're held to a higher standard. Hey, thanks again for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this week's episode, please check out some of our previous that may be here, 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 or here. I'm not real sure. But anyway, please get the, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification. It'll let you know when we drop any other content. Until next week, peace. <laughs>